I want to talk to you about the way in which good pool water turns into bad pool water. And by that, what I mean is I want to explain the process and the mechanism by which the water was good and it kind of wasn't and now it's terrible and we're having a nightmare of a time fixing it. And this all stems from a big swimming pool that I dealt with this summer that went green and stayed green and see, just seemed to be resistant to every form of treatment that we would throw at the thing. And because of that, I want to explain that process a little bit. There's for sure pool owners out there that haven't experienced that, whether they've just been good with their chemistry or if you're new to owning a swimming pool. But I want you to understand the nature of containing tens of thousands of gallons of water in essentially a sterile environment. I mean, like the environment's not sterile at all. It's literally the opposite of that. It's open to everything from bird crap and ducks to whatever getting into your swimming pool. But we maintain the water as sterile. We use a sanitizer, chlorine, a chemical sanitizer to kill, sanitize, oxidize, get rid of everything in the water that would be potentially harmful to you as a swimmer. And so that's the way that the process works. The thing that you may fail to realize as a new swimming pool owner is that pools move very slowly. They're giant lumbering beasts. That's the way I describe them to people. And the larger the swimming pool, the more true this is. Tens of thousands of gallons of water and you want to make a pH correction to the water. First of all, there's a number of different chemical variables which could have a net result on your pH correction and ultimately how much pH correction you're able to achieve. So right away, there's a, a number of different moving variables here which are going to confuse or move the goalposts, so to speak, in terms of how much to add in terms of acid or something alkaline like baking soda in order to change your pH and then the actual result you get in the water. But further to that, what's the time scale here? How long from the time that you add acid to the water until such time as you can see the lowered pH result? Well, you're going to see a little bit right away, but then there's this diffusion of water into your pool and it takes time for the diffusion of clean filtered water and chemically treated water to get to the deepest, darkest corners of your pool. And so it takes many hours before you get these results. And this is true whether you're doing like a chlorine addition or making a pH adjustment or adding an algicide or a flocculent to the pool, whatever the case is, it's going to take time to work. And the whole time that that's happening, whatever it is you're doing, there's other chemical reactions happening in the pool. There's new debris being introduced and it's oxidizing and it rained the next day and that's a bunch of new contaminants and water that's in there diluting the water that you had in your pool. Like all of this stuff adds up and here's what I want you to take away from this video. When you're watching the water in your swimming pool, you notice, oh look, it's a little cloudy or is that a little bit of green or are we getting algae or you test the chemicals and you're like, nah, something's not in range here. That's the point at which to take big steps, serious full measure actions to rectify the problem that you're encountering. What a lot of people would do is they would regard the pool and go, oh, look, it's water's a little cloudy today. And then just go about your business like normal. And that's where you went wrong because at this point, a repair to this water, whatever's wrong with it, is probably going to be relatively minor. By the time you let that go another 24, 48 hours, or 48 hours plus, then it rained, or you could have a nightmare on your hands from a chemistry perspective, and you're going to need to make adjustments to four or five different things, but you can't do that all at once. You got to do them one at a time and leave a bunch of time, maybe overnight in between, and then retest and reevaluate and do it again. You start chasing your tail a little bit, and the whole while the pool's getting greener and greener, and the sun's blasting down on it. Oh, we got a bunch more rain. All of these things are working against you because you are already dealing with a compromised pool. The, the pool is not in balance, as we like to say. And as a result, things start going wrong, but they start compounding and going wrong quickly. And this one thing that's wrong affects these other things down the line. And when you make a corrective action, it's slow, it takes time for it to happen. But it's not the same for like when it rains, when it rains, it's like, and now your pool is full of this contaminated water. It's the pH of the water is not correct. It doesn't have any sanitizer at all. In fact, it's probably got contaminants in it that are going to 
erode the free chlorine that you have in your water already. It's so common for people to complain about green water after rains. Like experienced pool owners know when you're having rains, you just get out there with some extra chlorine because you know you're going to need it. So that's the takeaway here. I want you to understand that pools take a long time to make chemical corrections too. And there's a number of different moving goalposts or changing variables involved here. So you're constantly testing and reevaluating and giving more time than testing again and reevaluating again, adding more things. When you see stuff going wrong, a chemical test where you have something, some parameter is out, a visual indication like cloudy water, turbidness, green or algae forming, anything like that, those are the times to get serious about your water chemistry. Do a detailed water analysis. If there's stuff that needs to happen, do it now. Don't wait until there's a much bigger problem. That is the problem. The pool should never be cloudy. The pool should never be green. You should never have any of your chemical parameters outside of the ideal range, and then you just leave it there. You should never do those things. If you don't do those things, you're going to have a lot easier time maintaining your pool and you won't let it get bad. And then once it's bad, you don't have to fight this giant uphill battle in order to fix it. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.